I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I don't know if it's even possible to uh, imagine the impact that this our guest today, and probably for the next two weeks, has had on uh, the Mormon Christian debate here in Utah. I'm speaking of Sean McCraney, and welcome, Sean. I appreciate you coming. It is great to be here. <laughs> I'm sure your face is well recognized, and I thought I'd bring you in quickly, even though I've got a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, Sean was one of those that um, challenged me to get a library card, as you always said, to uh, trust the Bible mm -hmm. and to turn my life to Jesus, and I appreciate that. Sean's uh, uh, hosted a half hour or an hour long call-in show since March of 2006. You can still find it on HOTM.TV. And um, it's just, uh, it, it, he's covered almost every aspect of Mormonism and Christianity, and we'll talk a lot about that, I guess. The other interesting thing is that in April of 2011, Carla and I went to Sean's Bible study for the first time, and here we listened to uh, what was taught, and after we, we went up and talked to Sean, and he put his arms around us and prayed with us. I'd never had that happen before. Huh. Nobody had ever put their arms around me and prayed. And then uh, in August of 2011, I was asked, or I guess I invited myself to, uh, to share my 17 minutes, which we'll talk about maybe in a minute. And then in November, uh, actually, uh, oh, and it was that time in August of 2011, you called me Bishop Earl, and that's where I got the, the moniker of Bishop <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, and then in November of 2011, Sean asked me if I was interested maybe in sharing uh, or interviewing people who would, had come out of Mormonism and might want to share their story. And so we started there. You said you'd always wanted to do that. Yeah. And so you thought maybe this was the way to do it. And you picked somebody that is so... Good at it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice to have you. And I, I know a lot of people know you. You've told your story on John DeLynn's Mormon uh, uh, Stories broadcast. And yeah podcast, and we're, I'm sure you've told it a number of times, Yeah. but maybe we have some in our audience that haven't been aware of those stories and certainly have heard this, the name Sean McCraney, perhaps. And so if you don't mind, we'll spend the first little bit talking about your background and your history, and right. where were you born? Uh, born in uh, Montebello, California. Montebello. L LA area. Okay. And uh, parents, uh, they were sealed in the LDS temple prior to my birth. They were converts. Converts. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And can we tell when you were born? You okay with 61. that? 61. October. So, Sean, you're 54 now. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my, I have uh, five siblings. And uh, well, my. Where'd you fall? I'm in the middle. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm so balanced. <laughs> <laughs> you got it from both. Uh, I got it from both <laughs> ends, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was uh, my parents, they joined the LDS church because 
it would be uh, a step up for them in terms of social grooming. Yeah. Uh, they came from some really dark sides of the tracks, so to speak, in the L.A. Yeah. area. Yeah. And uh, my mom knew that that would be something that would be good to raise kids in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in many ways she was probably right. Well, California has always had a heavy concentration of Latter-day yeah. Saints, right? I mean, yeah. As I was growing up, we always heard that, okay, California is getting as many Mormons as Utah has now, yeah. just because of the population and everything. Mm -hmm. So Big influence. Big. Uh, so, they active then, and you were active, your family? And, active, uh, yeah. yep. Uh, went, didn't necessarily like a sacrament meeting, but loved church. Did you? Oh, yeah. I, I, I like social you things. Mean? Basketball, no, uh, dances and stuff? Dances, oh yeah, yeah. love the dances. Love the socials. I like the people. I'm yeah. a people person, so I enjoyed the interaction. Yeah. And LDS as a people, you know, if you're going to hang out with a people group, the LDS are a good people group. Yeah. So, and the kids are fun. They're mischievous. They're, they like lighting fireworks and having the bishop <laughs> chase them and things. So, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the LDS experience yeah. uh, as a kid. And uh, you, you mentioned you've been in some of your interviews, and I, of course, watched those to prepare for this. So, but you said you were a little rebellious. Yeah, Earl, I was, uh, I was born with two distinct proclivities. <laughs> and, and I say this a lot, you've probably heard it, but one was I really did uh, want to know God. From a very young age, I remember talking with him and, and racking my brain as to why people, when they wrote the name God, didn't make it all uppercase. And I remember being like five thinking, how thinking come they don't write G-O-D and they make it G in a small D? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I had this desire for him. And the other uh, thing... Um, That's so unusual. It is unusual, yeah. I mean, I don't even know that an older person even thinks that yeah, deeply it was about... Weird. God, yeah. yeah. And what was the other thing? And, and the other thing was I love sin. <laughs> I mean, Welcome to the club. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, although you and I were different in that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was a man of the flesh, and if it meant, like I said, uh, mischief or uh, girls or food or whatever it was that was out there, I loved it. Anything of the flesh. Anything <laughs> of the flesh, yeah. <laughs> Well, did that uh, disappoint mom and dad much, or brothers and sisters, or? They tried to monitor it through restriction and law, and then they yeah. just gave up. Yeah. And this threw me on the, the, the bishop and the ward and everything else. So you and, take care of Yeah, them. you take care of them. <laughs> did, uh, you get a, did you get a driver's license at 16? I did. Yeah. Probably a mistake. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little more freedom. And more stuff. freedom, more trouble. Yeah. And, uh, but always like going to church. And uh, because of the social yeah. aspect of it. And knew about the doctrine in the weird stuff. Didn't know a lot of the other stuff, but I knew, like, if you want to know if a spirit was right, you shake the hand. Oh, you, you know, knew that. Yeah. All those strange kinds of things. That uh, the moon will be blood red in the last days. Weird things like that our friends would always talk about. But I didn't really know Jesus, yeah. anything like that. But again, still had, the, in the back of your mind at least, a... A sense that you wanted to know who God was. Always, yeah. always. That's amazing. Yeah. Did you uh, uh, ever read the Book of Mormon? No. Uh, parts of it, of course. Uh, did not study anything that includes schoolwork <laughs> <laughs> until after uh, the mission. That way, we were probably a little more similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way we were we were alike. Yeah, I knew we had some <laughs> things in common. Uh, no, but. Um, I think that it was the mission that helped me uh, hone skills of study. Okay, well, yeah. so you, you go through, get, get through high school, and uh, you decide to go on a mission, or it's, you're still rebellious, and you think, well, this is a way to clean up, or? Yeah, uh, the, actually, they disfellowshipped me when I was uh, 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I've, and I've said this before, but they wanted to excommunicate me, and, oh. and they made that known. Yeah. Uh, because I had been so rebellious, and, and let me tell you something, they taught that, listen, you need to go in and confess your sin, and I believe, okay, that's what you do, sure. so I did, and I started when I was like 12. You started going through the list. <laughs> yeah, well, by the time I got to be 18. This fellowship, okay, excommunicate. Yeah, yeah, it, he's done so much, 
we this is what we got to do to fix this guy. A, a great body of work. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, great body of work. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they just and they were going to excommunicate me and I learned something about church politics and my mom went to the bishop and said, "You excommunicate my son, our family's walking." Whoa. Yeah. That was a big step. It was and they disfellowshipped me. And I learned maybe there's not so much God working in this as there is men. A little more practicality or yeah. something. Huh? Yeah. So you were disfellowshipped. And then, so you had to wait a year or so for that. I had to, to wait a year. Okay. And then they got me ready to go on the mission. And, uh, and I met those requirements. And they allowed, in those days, they allowed you to do that. You know, we're going to yeah. get him ready. Do you think to go. now they would no. maybe not let you go? I don't think they'd let me go. Oh. Interesting. So where do, where do you where do you go on your mission? Uh, Pennsylvania Harrisburg. It's where Bruce R. McConkie served his mission. Oh, was it? His was Eastern States, but yeah. mine was there, and we Included met some state. people who he knew and brought yeah. in, and uh, yeah, and it was uh, I was a, an assistant to the president for uh, more than half the mission. Were you really? And, yeah, yeah. Wow. I was in the office with him most. Now, I've known you, of course, these last five years, four or five years. I've also watched you. In fact, I went back and looked at some of the archive when I think I started watching your show, and it was probably in 08. So I've listened to you a lot. You are articulate. You're very knowledgeable about, you, you know, you use big words a lot of times <laughs> and stuff. Uh, were you that way on your mission? Do you feel like you were I uh, quickly, able to talk and yeah, I quickly be, kind of became known for knowing the scriptures, and I don't know how. I didn't go to seminary about a year. Do you memorize scriptures? I can't memorize worth a darn. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I can't memorize really worth a darn. Yeah. It's like conceptual. It's like I was able to conceptualize what this topic means throughout scripture. I don't know. You think the mission president wanted just to keep you close? Were you rebellious Probably. on your mission? No. I was, I used it as the time, Earl, to uh, reform myself. And I mean, we had that white handbook. And I really, honestly, I can say, I never broke a rule. I did not break you a rule. Get up early. And Got study, up early every time. Worked hard. Studied, worked hard. Would not hang out at members' houses. I mean, I was like the wow. missionary. extreme missionary. Yeah. Wow. Had fun, but I, I obeyed the rules. Companions were good and... Yeah, Companions were good. They didn't like me too much. I wouldn't go to homes to eat dinners and things. You just waste time. And waste time. No, time. we were working. Now, did you read the Book of Mormon there? Read that completely. Yeah. A New Testament. Doctrine and Covenants. Doctrine and Covenants. Yeah. Pearl of Great Price. Yeah, studied all that. So you feel like you had a testimony then. Got the it on the mission. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know God then? Still had the relationship with God, but to be honest on the mission, I think I learned about Jesus. Oh. Yeah. I wasn't converted to Jesus, but yeah. I learned his importance then, mm. at least in the plan of salvation that the LDS talk about, because he does play a role. Sure. And so I understood that role, and I appreciated him more when I came back from the mission than I did going out. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Bearing your testimony, you just, I mean, there was just never any question that the church was, wasn't true, right? Or was, was, oh, it was true. No. <laughs> mission fully, uh, fully immersed. Yeah. Yeah. And the church was true. Church it was, was, it was true. It was the way to get to yeah. the celestial kingdom and yep. just everything. Gonna go to that celestial kingdom. <laughs> well, let's back up just a little bit for on a personal level. You'd met, uh, had you met Mary at this point? I had met her. Um, before your mission? Yeah, about a year before. Okay. Yeah. And did she wait for you? Uh, she says she waited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Notes, notes and letters to prove otherwise. She wasn't married or? when I got back, but she didn't write to me and keep contact on really? the mission. No, no I no. think she was with some, some dating some other guy. Uh, but uh, I knew she'd make a good wife. Yeah. Yeah. Good LDS wife. Yeah. So. Uh, in the same ward? Were you in we were same? in the same ward, and our mothers met before we did. She was at BYU, and. Uh, Mary was? Yeah, her okay. second year, and I was there my freshman year. Before the mission. Oh, you went to BYU yeah. before the mission. Yeah, before okay. the mission. One year. Yeah. Got kicked out. Car burglary. You were... Yeah, got kicked out of BYU for car burglary. For real? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I mean, telling you, I was not a good guy. I was just always in trouble. And so they, I was on a swimming scholarship, and they, they booted me out. 
And so uh, our moms were talking, and we came back to the ward for the summer. That's when I first met Mary. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know you were a lifeguard. When was that? That was from 16 all the way through till I went on the mission. Oh, okay. Yeah. Worked at Huntington State Beach and lifeguarded all those years. A good swimmer out there, and that, and yeah. you got a scholarship to BYU. Yeah, to swim. Yeah. To swim. Yeah, got swimmer. kicked off the team. You say? Got kicked off. Got kicked out of school. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now you went back though. I did. They let me after, back in after your mission. Yeah, because the mission was such a good reform for me, and the yeah. mission presidents wrote such good things. You know that all of that helped me. I think it was at that age when that would work. Yeah. Today, I don't think it would ever work. We don't buy that. No. <laughs> He's still the same You guy. need to prove yourself today, yeah. So were you a good boy then the last few years at BYU? Or? I was good outwardly, but not in my heart. Okay. And that's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. So you, something happens the night you come home from your mission. Yeah, I uh, met Mary, up with Mary again. We decided we were going to get married. Yeah. And uh, six months later, that happened in the L.A. Temple. Hmm. And um, I just knew she was a great gal. I knew she'd make a wonderful mother. That was key to me. Yeah. And if I've ever made a good decision in terms of a wife and the type of mother and her care and things like that, it was that one. It was a, a, probably the best decision I had ever made personally. Everything else was a disaster. And I could have picked some pretty rotten <laughs> could have picked some companions. <laughs> Were you prayerful during all this time? I mean, to thinking about going on a mission, should I go? And, and then to marry Mary. All was social. That all prayer? All intellectual. You, didn't, you weren't involving God much in that? No. Going for the feelings or anything? No. No. Really? Interesting. Even on the mission, it wasn't. I would pray and do it, but it just didn't have a, a place of me trying to receive revelation. I just simply said, "This is making sense. This is the best decision. I'll do that." I would pray, but I never really kind of went with more with the intellectual kind of decision. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. And then you're a, at your last couple of years at BYU. You're an elders quorum president. Yeah, I was an elders quorum president, and uh, I was committed. Uh, I believed, you know, I had the mission work ethic now. I had done it. So now it was really put your uh, shoulder to the wheel and push along. And I took it seriously. And, and, and it was really interesting to me because other, we had a double elders quorum. The ward was so big at BYU. And it wasn't a BYU ward. It was a regular Orem ward. Oh. Yeah. And the other elders quorum president... He was much more Mormon-like in the way he talked and was and lived. But he'd come in and say, yeah, we got 73% this month. And it was just not work. I, I couldn't understand if this is so important if to God. If we're supposed to do home teaching. Do it, do dang it. it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, we got 100%. And they didn't believe me. I would say, Let me, I have gone out to these families who weren't visited by the guys, and I personally have knocked on the door and left a note because this is important. I was that... Zealous, Art, yeah. Zealous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, because yeah. <laughs> we didn't even do, I mean, right. we never did that. So, no. I mean, would, so like on the 20th, you'd follow up and find out who yeah. hadn't oh, been yeah. visited and you'd go in. And, yeah. That doesn't last for long, does it? No. No, no you burn out. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. You think you're earning your way to, to heaven? Earning your so. way, staying out of trouble, pleasing God, yeah. keeping Him loving you. So, what happens after uh, BYU? While at BYU, I started um, kind of reading through Scripture again, but a little bit more critically. And the reason is, Earl, is because when I got off the mission, I knew that I had done everything right and that I had obeyed the rules. And within 24 hours, the old Sean McCraney was alive and well in me. Your heart hadn't yeah. really changed. It hadn't changed. And I knew my flesh is no different now than it was when, before I went. I've just learned to modify it and perform a cover it up a little bit better. Cover it up better, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Dress it up. Because you said something about always looking the part and doing I really did. Yeah. Yeah. And Which might be why later on, if we get to it, why I don't so much look the part anymore. Yeah. Well, I we really will. try. We will that. get to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I really did try to live the part 
and yeah. uh, but it just didn't change me internally. Don't you think there are a lot of LDS that go through it? What you're talking about is hypocrisy. Yeah. You know, being hypocritical, being one thing, knowing another, thinking another, yeah. and yet uh, being putting on the facade. Yeah, and you find that very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I'm a hypocrite. And, and I know that I lie, but I really do have a hard time not being who I am. Yeah, being and I'd, honest. I'd rather be known as the bad things yeah. than to be lying. And to be honest with yeah. yourself and so on. Yeah. Okay, so then you end up going back to uh, uh, California. After, Went back to California, you... studied uh, fashion design at BYU. Yes. Okay, okay. And, uh, and, uh, got hired at a retail store in South Coast Plaza in Southern California and managed that. And then um, I became a stockbroker uh, because the money wasn't there as in retail and the hours were too long. And then it was as a stockbroker, I began to say, I've, I, I'm a, now I'm an elder scorn president in Huntington Beach oh, again. Yeah. Okay. And I'm starting to say, something's not right here. With I, yourself? With myself. Was it, I mean, the church was all right, was it? The church it was, was just okay. you not. I could not, the church could not save me. Yeah. I really tried. A temple marriage, uh, went to the temple monthly, prayed with Mary, did the activity, served, and it, yet inwardly I was still uh, diabolical. And, and that relationship I wanted with God and had with Him when I was younger, I thought, had been kind of diffused. It wasn't as strong anymore. And I was thinking, how come? What, a, what, a, what should I be doing? Yeah, what, what can I do? Yeah. I mean, what is wrong with me, you know? And so I started looking at uh, anti-Mormon stuff then. And that's when I started reading um, No Man uh, Knows My History, the Von Brody. Brody book. Yeah. Now I made a little list of things. That, was, that came out in like 19, uh, I don't know where I'm, all my notes here. That came out in 1945. Were you aware of, uh, had you been aware of that one? Oh, here it is. Uh, 1945, have you been aware of that? No idea. And then 1963 is when Sandra and Gerald Tanner wrote their Shadow and Reality. All I knew about uh, the Tanners was evil. That's all I knew. Okay. And so, and in fact, I used to get confused with N. Elvin Tanner and Sandra Tanner, and when I'd hear of an Eldon Tanner, I thought, ooh, and then... Oh, not the same. Yeah, I, yeah. Or the same feeling of... Yeah, I, and, I, and so Tanner just was so in my uh, system of being wrong and being bad. Yeah. And um, came from the mission and what the LDS say. And, and I remember my mom, me saying, who is uh, Gerald Tanner? He's a very bad man who lives in Utah. Your mom said that? Yeah. yeah. He's a very bad man. <laughs> Oh living God. in Utah. Huh? Yeah, living in Utah. Now your mom's active all this time. Yeah. Your dad active? He was yeah. active. He did everything, but he did it to support the family. And then when the last kid was married in the temple or went on the mission, I can't remember which, my brother, he started going into inactivity. Oh, did you ever talk to him about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's his own man. He, yeah. he came from such a rough childhood. He's a great man. I love him to death, uh, but not a man of faith. Hmm. No, not Mormon faith, not Christian faith. He is a man of science, you know. <laughs> so, Your siblings, how, how are they? All active. Uh, I mean, all LDS still. A few have gone kind of inactive a little bit, hmm. but they all maintain their Mormon ties. And then I have my younger siblings. Uh, my, bo my brother especially is is quite ardently active LDS. oh yes okay yes yes and that's been a that's been a, a that's strain been hard, very it? difficult except now it's starting to ease up he's kind of matured a little bit i've matured a little bit and so we're able to but isn't it interesting how many people you've influenced but not in your family or no. not not necessarily in your family no it's tough not, yeah your own family i felt that same have you yeah yeah they know our foibles I guess so. Yeah, and it's tough. And yet, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So you get studying other philosophies and you, you study, I know you've gone through a list of like Nietzsche and Kierkegaard and Very big. Marx and... Yeah, know. I went to Marx and Engels and Lenin and Trotsky and Stalin and, and I considered communism for a while. Uh, this was in the later years, I start, we call them the 17 lost years where I was kind of roiling in 
despair. I now, were you a stockbroker during this time? Yeah, I was a stockbroker at different places, different yeah. brokerage houses. Okay. And uh, I was a seminary teacher, and I was... Oh, still active in the church. Always active. Yeah. Always Even active. Even during these 17 lost years. Yes, yeah. active, yes. 17 Pl playing lost. Playing the part. What did Mary think of this? Did you talk to her about these I did. findings? I did. She was kind of the prototypical LDS wife was, you know, we, why do you even care? What does that even matter? You know, yeah. I don't know if I believe that either, but so what? The church is good. Yeah. You know? It's doing well for our family. Yeah. But as she kind of maintained the course, I just kept just going, you just searching. Searching for what? Just peace? Peace, freedom, understanding, freedom, understanding, reconciliation, maybe the relationship I thought I had with God when I was a kid, just wanting to have me be able to talk to him and him talk to me and feel like there was some kind of relationship that I was acceptable to him. And Mormonism told me in order to be acceptable to him, you have to do all these things. And so I'd done them, and yet I was still not acceptable to him Temple, in my heart. mission, white Temple, shirt and tie, mission. and 100% home teaching. Yes, home teach, serve. Yeah. We wrote road shows. We did, I was with the youth. I was in a bishopric, and, and I was in a stake high council. Yeah. And all of that stuff, just, just so much activity, trying, and yet just dead inside. And I see it in LDS men, and some women, but more in men who are just there, you know. You see it. They're, just, they're there because that's what they do. Are they being honest with themselves, do you think? I think they think they're being more noble than honest. Noble. Yeah. I think they'll live the noble lie. They'll suffer for the cause because it's helping the family. They don't know what else is out there they either. They don't. I mean, they don't know the anti-Mormon or negative stuff. They don't really know this positive stuff that we'll talk about later about Jesus and who he is, what he did for us. Right. They don't know that. They don't. They or can't. at least we think they don't know that because we've been through that. Yeah. 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 And they're in a miserable place. Yeah. And as a stake high councilman, I used to speak a lot. And, and Oh, I, every month. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> and you used to see their faces. And, and, and I was internally going through the same thing. And I would try to speak to something about that. And they would come up afterward and say, you really touched me. I feel, yeah. Yeah. I, I sent something in there yeah. and they related to what you were yeah. saying. Yeah. Were you bearing testimony of the church then still? I was doing that, doing, but I was because incorporating of the, the searching and the, and the angst that we have yeah. of where is the truth? What does it really mean, you know? Yeah. And was actually called in the, by the stake president during those years and saying, go back to that ward next month and repeat the talk and uh, change it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we change want, it. Yeah, we want you to cover these principles. Like the assignment came, you went in and talked about, about something this. different. We don't want that. Oh my god. Yeah, it a little was, rebellious still. Yeah, there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Sean, our first half hour is all gone. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. So anyway, I appreciate that. Appreciate you watching, and uh, we. Uh, uh, Sean has written three books, and we'll cover those next week as well. Mormonism A to Z. The first one, I was born again Mormon. We'll talk about that one for sure. And if my kingdom were of this earth. Good night.